it's getting late and the winter sun setting over the woods that surround your little cottage home you come inside from doing your chores wiping dirt from your forehead and your mother or in danish Mor says, Daughter, I need you to fetch me a bucket of water from the well at the edge of the woods. Immediately, your little sister's ears perk up. As sister loves playing around the old well, she's already out the door as Mor calls after her. And remember, don't look too far down the well, or Brondemann might get you. Now, you're a big girl, and you know that Brondemann is just a story that Mor tells you to keep the little kids safe. But... As you approach the well, you decide to have a little fun at your sister's expense. Your longer legs quickly overtake your sister's, beating her to the well with a few seconds to spare, and you peer down into the well. Hiding your smirk, you cry, I see him! Really? Sister's voice is nearly a shriek with her breathless excitement, and as she reaches the edge of the well, she leans far over to get a good view. Where? she says, peering into the depths. Oh, it's too dark to see him now. He's hiding, you tell Sister. You have to go down there to see him now. Sister is still small enough to stand in the bucket and ride it down into the well. In fact, she's done it before, but always during the day when the other children were there to help pull the bucket with the extra weight. You're betting that Sister is too scared to get in the bucket at night, with the threat of Brudman fresh in her mind. But Sister must have been inspired by your confidence, because unexpectedly she grabs the rope, hops into the bucket... And since you weren't prepared for this to actually happen, the rope slips from where it's loose in your grasp, and your stomach sinks through the floor as you watch your sister, screaming, disappear into the darkness. You grab for the rope as fast as you can, tearing the skin on your palms, trying to stop the bucket and sister from falling. You manage to loop the rope around your arm and stop the bucket just before you hear a splash. Phew. Sister, are you okay? You shout as you pull the bucket back up, using all your strength to lift Sister by yourself. It's slow, hard work, and with each laborious turn of the crank, you hear the old well's windless creak with an ominous groan. Inch by inch, you haul the bucket up the well. Crank, creak, crank, creak. Finally, you glimpse the shine of a pair of eyes glinting up at you. Sister's okay. Hang on tight, you cry. I'm going to get you out of there. But as you crank the handle again and those glinting eyes get closer, you can see that they're not brown, but red. You keep cranking. Sister must have gotten something in her eyes when she fell. It's the algae. Maybe she's crying. Crank. Creak. Crank. Creak. Still, all you can see of Sister is her red eyes, and now her shadowy hands waving about wildly. Hold the rope, sister, hold tight, you cry. And with a final heave of the winch, the bucket crests the edge of the well. Sister isn't on it. But why was the bucket so heavy? Hands still grasping the crank, you lean over as far as you dare. And suddenly a tiny hand, the color of ink, shoots out of the bucket and grabs your clothes. You scream and you jump back. And as you let go of the crank handle, the bucket zips back down the well, splashing in the unseen water below. And then... You want to look. You need to look. Sister's still down there. But you're shaking. In a moment of pure panic, you break into a run, heading back for home. Moch! Moch! Come outside, quick! You shout as you burst through the door, but Moch is lying on the couch, her face dotted with beads of sweat. Oh, I'm so ill, daughter, she moans. Fetch me some water, will you? No, Moch! Sister fell in the well, and Bonman got her, and he tried to take me too! You cry, gesturing at the bloody handprint on your shirt. But I just saw your sister, Moch says. There, she's right behind you. And you freeze as you hear dripping water behind you, close. You turn slowly and inches away from your face as the sodden form of your sister, hair bedraggled and hanging in wet clumps, slimy with green algae. Sister raises one dripping arm, reaching out for you. Her mouth opens as if to speak, but instead dark, filthy water spews out more than you thought she could possibly have swallowed. You hear grandmother coming down the stairs behind you as you stifle the scream in your throat. Quick, child, you know what to do. 
You turn to Grandma just in time to catch a copper coin that's sailing through the air in your direction. You know from Grandma's stories from before that she got the coin from an old witch who used to live deep in the woods, who might live there still, even though she was very old when Grandma was just a child and got the coin from her. You catch the coin and turn, slogging through the putrid water that's still pouring off and out of Sister, fighting for each step in the swirling muck. You burst out the door and you tear down the hill for the well, stopping several feet away. Too scared to get any closer, you fling the copper witch's coin into the well with all your might, wishing as hard as you can that things could just go back to the way they were. And that's all you remember from that night. You wake up sometime later, You know, time has passed because when you open your eyes, sunlight streams in and forces you to squint to see anything. There are faces above you blocking out some of the light, and you begin to realize that the voices of Mor and Grandma are speaking softly about you. She did what had to be done in the end, says Grandma. She threw the witch's copper coin in the well and set her sister's spirit free. If only they'd listened about Brunben, says Grandma. But at least now he'll be appeased for another generation. Now... She must go into the woods. Oh yes, the witch is still there. She must obtain another coin, because someday she'll have a daughter, and she'll have to teach her about Brunman before it's too late.